Hi all, let's have a look at the very exciting clash between Gata Kamsky and Hikaru Nakamura in round three of the US Chess Championships. Gata Kamsky played d4 and in fact he played the dreaded London system here after e6, bishop f4, the London system. So White is going to be playing c3, trying to keep a solid centre usually. c5, but actually e3 for the moment. Of the knight c6, now we see c3, this triangle. So it's like a Slav defense in reverse in some respects. d5, knight bd2, and we have now bishop d6. This has been played quite a lot. Black is trying to fight for that central e5 square and challenge this bishop. It actually drops back to g3, knowing that if black dare take, then this h file is quite useful here. Hikaru actually castled, that's actually more popular just to castle and leave that bishop alone. Bishop d3, b6, preparing to put the bishop on a more useful diagonal. And now maybe an interesting move by London system standards. Usually knight e5 is actually played here. But we see the move e4, so why is changing the pawn structure? Maybe uh, making it a little bit less stable in some respects. Usually uh, knight e5 is very popular here with a continuation like this. So hitting c6, uh, black can't take here because then that's a fork. So knight e5 is um, an interesting move. So if bishop b7, then there's f4, and we have a kind of stonewall in reverse with the bishop on a more useful square than c1. Uh, this this is been seen quite a bit actually there's 26 games even from this position where black is trying to clamp down on the e4 square so it can carry on a bit like this knight f5 this has been seen before and the knight's going back to put a clamp on the e4 square it's a very interesting play from from that position but instead yeah we see this here after b6 we don't see knight e5 we see e4 so this is more exciting than usual and in fact, with the imminent threat of e5 or taking then e5, the bishop just retreats and we transpose into a kind of now uh, French defence advance variation after e5. If the tension uh, is kept, if e5 isn't played, then this position might risk white having an isolated queen's pawn, for example, like this, where white gets an isolated queen's pawn but has the bishop pair, of course. Uh, but white might not have liked this position. So instead we have this kind of advanced French defence structure with the knight now going to h5. Uh, so no h3s to keep the bishop here because you don't want to like take like this. Uh, so yeah, a very interesting move, knight h5. It's probably like one of the best moves actually. It looks odd to put a knight on the rim and knight on the rim is dim, but it's about the specifics of the position, not these like general sayings in this specific position this makes a lot of sense uh, white castles and it's actually left there for a moment bishop d7 rook e1 uh, rook c8 as though maybe c takes and knight b4 is on the card so white safeguards against that sort of thing with a3 so white has a solid position but he's giving up now uh, you know the bishop any time it's actually taken here so black has the bishop pair, and in particular, can he do something with this e7 bishop? Maybe these dark squares are potentially vulnerable in the future. Can black do something here? Something very, very interesting now, f5, with the idea that, you know, maybe a follow-up of g5. If white dares take, then there's central pressure, and the dark square bishop is making itself felt immediately. So actually, Gata Kamsky left this structure, he actually took on c5 here. After b takes c5, his idea is revealed that these two pawns are actually useful for b4. Trying to tempt black to play something like this to get that d4 square. You can see that d4 square might be useful uh, for white in, sometimes. So actually here, Necker played g5. He wants to fight for central control. And this is a typical move with the bishop pair, trying to play for g4 to try and undermine white's control of the key central squares. Also, it has some attacking implications. Also, of course, you know, maybe bishop g5 is useful in the future. 
White now plays a very um, prophylaxis type move, Knight H2. So in advance of things like F4, maybe like G4 is possible. Uh, the Knight can also potentially reroute. So it's ahead of the game, ahead of this threat of G4. It's gone to H2 immediately. Uh, an interesting position, D4, trying to open up the center, maybe this bishop to try and put it on this diagonal facing the white king. But things get a bit sharp now. B5. And we have D takes C3. B takes C6. C takes D2. Naka is actually, Nakamura is actually a pawn up here. This reflects a pawn uh, sacrifice by white. And in this position, uh, it's interesting that white just played rook takes d2. There's been some arguments that maybe here a more accurate move is bishop c4 looking to take on e6. And if bishop d5, rook takes d2. But this would transpose into something like the game, in fact, where it might actually be possible for black to consider a positional queen sacrifice with bishop takes c4. Uh, this this is a very interesting position because we have this past pawn as well as the rook and bishop for queen. Very interesting uh, position. So maybe uh, Gatskamsky wasn't uh, too keen on that. He'd rather sacrifice a pawn here because now he played in this move order rook takes d2. And after bishop d5, he still had the option of bishop c4 here with that pin, but maybe he just didn't want to risk this. Um, certain, another example, queen a4, you might think. It's not such a big deal. The bishop centralized on d5. Uh, if queen takes, hitting here, king f7, and black's got this you know, strong past pawn prospect, it's a difficult position uh, for white, in fact. Uh, here, in fact, you know, technically it might even be in Black's favor. So it's very, very interesting that actually Gatakamsky decided to just play a pawn down this position. He actually didn't play Bishop C4. He tried to weaken White's king side and these light squares. So G4, and now we see C4. Yes, a, a solid extra pass pawn on the surface, but after F4, yeah, White's. Um, has got some prospects potentially if black slips up. Queen e2, queen a5, and now we have the move knight f3, trying to tie down the bishop to g5. <clears throat> Rook cd8, uh, which means that maybe uh, there's an idea of bishop takes f3. <laughs> Bishop takes f3 might be uh, coming up soon. The the rook just steps back here. Rook d7, and there's a very simple plan of just strengthening the position for a bit, kind of overprotection of d5 as a central point. And it means, you know, the rook in the center here is good for lateral defense and also prospects to get to d2 later. So, a very, very sensible positional plan at this moment. a4, which means that maybe the b5 square is useful. It's protected there and it frees up the rook. To come like this potentially, rook f d eight, but black is playing you know very sensibly uh, central control, just doubling rooks there. So it seems at this moment a very comfortable position. A slight issue, of course, rook b five might be annoying. A six safeguarding against that, rook d c one, and here yeah it looks as though what is white doing? Bishop a three, rook d one. White seems to be marking time, but black now is strengthening a bit the king side with h6, the bishop is not going back to the fen there. Uh, it wasn't adequate, by the way, uh, to play this. I think black has uh, adequate defense here after taking. It's not really um, much going on there. Uh, so, OK, so we have h6 defending that g5 point, king h2. And again, white seems to be marking time here. So can Nakamura actually Manoeuvre to an advantage to increase his advantage here. You might think, well, you know, why can't this extra pawn be used? Um, it's it's actually more difficult than it looks to try and exploit that extra pawn, even though Black's got the bishop pair. Uh, part of the problem is these these weakened light squares, of course. 
uh, queen c5, king g1. Uh, now here is this might have been the time, the right time to use the doubled rooks to go into an opposite colour bishop position, which maybe that's that's what dissuaded away from doing this. But uh, queen c6 was played here. Interestingly, bishop takes f3, uh, secures some extra dot square pressure after rook d2, uh, pressure on e5 and f2 here. If bishop g6, so that uh, c4 is attacked. Bishop g7 putting more pressure. This looks as though this should be good for black, even if it's opposite colour bishops. Uh, so it's very, very tempting. You know, black's got that extra pawn. But will white be able to set up a light square blockade? That's the thing. So there's a it's kind of um, do we trust this extra material here? White's has got the, you know, the, op the opposite uh, bishop colour. So anyway, we see queen c6, so not trying to cash out yet, keeping the bishop pair. Rook d1, bishop g7, and now knight d4, queen c7. I think both players getting some time for that time control. Rook b8. So approaching move uh, 40 here, move 37. Now rook takes b8, queen takes. And then we have bishop e4, as though maybe taking an e6 is a bit dangerous. Queen c8. But actually, now kind of that wasn't the intention. In fact, just keep the blockade on the c pawn. So seeing what black's doing here, it's it is a bit committal to take on d5. Um, maybe rook takes d5 is best. And this kind of position, yeah, I mean it looks to be in black's favour, but is it enough? Uh, so basically, yeah, the bishop went back to c2, queen c6, knight d4, queen c7, knight f3. Yes, cat and mouse. <clears throat> rook d8, bishop b1, uh, and this might mean that um, potentially you might think the battery might be useful, but here it doesn't seem that great. The king can just walk away here, it seems. But uh, rook b8, we see actually bishop c2 just keeping the blockade on, on the c pawn basically. a5, it weakens the b5 score, which means knight d4 to b5 might be more effective at some point. Rook c1, queen b7. And again now this this looks like interesting stuff to take on f3 or come down the b file. Uh, I don't think white dare play something like rook b1. I think the queen would just take it off there. Consider that anyway. Queen d1, queen a8, staying away from rook b1 here, keeping this battery on f3. So it looks as though black's in the driving seat, a pawn up. Rook b4, rook d1. Queen c6, and now we see knight d4. This weakens, of course, g2. So what's going on here? Look at that knight. Queen c7, rook e1, queen b7, putting pressure on g2. But now we see rook d1. Of course, if bishop takes g2, then e6 looks like uh, that's that's a major problem. So we see bishop f8, but now knight b5 taking the pressure off e6. So why isn't g2 just hanging here? Well, there's the idea of pinning here and knight d6. Let's see. Bishop takes g2 was played. Rook d8. This is getting really intense now at move 52. Bishop h1 threatening checkmate. Queen f1 defending the checkmate, but also giving rise to queen h3 ideas in certain positions for attacking the black king. Rook b2. And now knight d6, not moving the bishop, take, attacking the queen. Queen d5. Things are getting really, really sharp here. White really wants to coordinate these four pieces against the king here. And black also has got very, very dangerous ideas. We see the move knight f7 hitting the queen. But isn't the knight hanging in some relations? The, the bishop's hanging. Very, very sharp, dramatic position here. And even Nakamura went wrong in this position. It's very, very difficult to calculate. Of course, everyone with engines uh, might have thought otherwise when, when looking at the games, because it seems as though there's at least two possibilities here that give black a clear advantage, but they're both very, very hard to actually fathom. Um, so before looking at rook takes c2, if queen c6, leaving the knight and bishop hanging, 
bishop g6, bishop e4, trying to undermine these pieces. Even this is complicated. Bishop takes e4, queen takes e4. There will be knight takes h6 check using the pin. And here you see some of the complexity after king g7, because white has resources like this. Rook d7 check. And if Nakamura started looking at this, he would have been a bit off put here, because now queen h3 is rearing its head. You know, if takes queen h3, it's horrible. Uh, so, you know, mating. So, you know, there's some dangers against the black king here. It turns out in this position, maybe black is doing well. King g6 for bishop takes h6. And now there's not just that, there's rook b1. So knight f7. And now here, if rook b1, there's a perpetual check possibility with check here, securing a draw like this. Black dare not step out because of the knight uh, d6. You know, if, if he was here, knight d6 to win the queen. So there's, there's horrible possibilities, you know, like this. So it seems, you know, the black king wasn't that safe. But yeah, in this position, instead of rook b1, this is where uh, computers would find an improvement here in bishop g7. And now this is getting uh, tricky for white face with rook b1. So knight d6, queen f3 is one of the stronger moves. And black is doing fantastically well now, for example, like this. But yeah, it's incredibly hard to see these variations with a rook, knight and queen potentially coming at your king. So I think Nakamura can be forgiven for not really calculating the full impact of, of a move like queen c6 with the idea of bishop e4 here. Even though two pieces are hanging, this is not the sort of thing really you like with, with these four pieces seemingly conspiring quite well in some of the variations. Uh, another idea is simply just to take the knight uh, for another positional queen sack here. And yeah, this, this uh, requires some confidence, but it seems uh, if we get this kind of scenario, rook and bishop and the extra pawn, this is in black's favor ultimately, if black can navigate away from all the checks Eventually, that should be in Black's uh, favour. But the move uh, Nakamura played actually helps White secure a draw miraculously with, um, let's see, Rook takes Queen, Bishop takes. So it seems another positional Queen sack with the Knight hanging. Uh, but instead of moving the Knight, we have the only move to save White here that Katakamski played. Can you see if I give you five seconds White to play? Okay, queen b1, yes, on this diagonal. The rook dare not move because queen g6 is, is good. You know, if rook e2, queen g6, say something like this, then knight takes h6. And if king f8, queen f7 is checkmate. And if we have this position, uh, black is threatening this mate in two. So once that's attended to, now we can get on with knight takes g5 and, and it's the black king that's in big trouble here. So very, very sharp stuff here. Uh, so yeah, it seems as though king takes um, f7. Um, so so in this position, instead of rook takes c2, it seems, yeah, queen c6 has something going for it, if you can calculate all of that, or king takes f7. But yeah, rook takes c2, ran into uh, this with queen b1. Uh, so the game continues, actually, not the rook moving, but king takes f7, forced to give up an exchange, uh, an exchange sacrifice. So queen takes c2. The queen against the two bishops and the extra pawn, but it's a fortress here. This position after bishop b4, queen d4, c3. Both players quickly established this was a kind of drawn position, a fortress position, and actually agreed to draw here. Yeah, white has to be uh, very careful about this pawn. But there's always going to be checks. So yeah, they agreed a draw. There's going to be a number of checking possibilities. A very, very dramatic game. It seems Nekamura was upset a bit. Apparently he you know he moved quite quickly off after the game. But uh, it was you know just such a complicated 
position i think we're only human and we've got to accept our limitations yeah i mean it's easy for any any computer even on an iphone to, to see to see for all the complexity in it like a millionth of a second but for us humans these these complications and the fear and the emotion wrapped up in, in the variations it's just too much um yeah chess is a very very difficult game so it's a game which um was very stubbornly fought by Gatikamsky and shows you know what what a practical choice the London system is even if it's not hugely theoretical it's really a solid nut to crack okay comments or questions on YouTube thanks very much